Servus, it's Old Moore again, and today I'm going to teach you how to set up alerts using Stream Elements. Also, before we start, quick reminder, if you need help setting up all your elements from our packages, check out our playlist that is at the end of the video or somewhere on top of here. All right, let's get started. So first, you have to visit streamelements.com and on the left side, you click on the streaming tools and my overlays. As you can see, I already have some overlays set up here. This is what I showed you in the previous videos. If you still need help setting up labels with stream elements for your OBS or create a full scene inside the browser source in stream elements, then please check out the previous videos in our playlist. In this video though, I will show you how to set up the alert box, add it into your OBS and also how to set up the font and other really cool features. So first, you click on the top right corner on new overlay. Then stream element will ask you for the overlay resolution. In this case, we will choosing 1080p because that's the base canvas resolution for our OBS Studio. If you're unsure what your base resolution is, open up your OBS, click on the settings tab and then choose video. And here the first option base canvas resolution is what you will need. Go back into stream elements and we're choosing 1080p, which is the resolution of 1920 by 1080. Click on start. So first I'm going to rename this into alert and I will confirm by saving on the top right corner. And then all we have to do is click on the plus sign, go to alerts and add an alert box widget. And this is already our first alert box. And if you want to test how it looks like, you can just go on to emulate, click on follow event. And this is our first alert. Obviously, this is just a very basic alert. And we want to now adapt and also add our animated alerts from the Brave series package. So on the left hand side on the alert box, you click on settings and here you can see all the alerts. If you click them, then you activate or deactivate them. So if you don't want a certain alert to be played, then you just have to deselect it. In this video, I will show you how to set up the subscribe alerts and the settings and everything else will also work for all the other alert settings. So we click on the little cogwheel on the right of subscribe alert and then we see the image, the video and all the other options. First, what I'm going to do is I will change the video to our Brave series animations. To do so, you click on change video and then you click on upload. Now, you open up the Brave series premium package, you click on the files tab and then on animated alerts. And here you can see all the alerts that we deliver in our package. Since we're working with the subscriber alert today, I will choose the Brave Alert subscriber and I just drag and drop it into stream elements. After a couple of seconds, you can now see that we've added the subscription alert. All we have to do is click submit to confirm. And as you can see here in the left preview, it's already working. And also if we now emulate the subscriber alert, we can see that the animation is already adapted. Now we can change the sound. So there's two options. Either you just clear the sound and you don't use any sound at all, or you add in the sound that we deliver with our Brave package. To do so, you click on upload sound. And again, you open up the package, you go into the files, and then you look for the alert sounds folder, double click, and then you can choose the alert sound, in this case, Brave subscriber sound. Drag and drop it again. It's going to upload to stream elements and we click submit. And now we have the new sound added. Again, you can test it and listen to it. All right, that was quite loud. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to minimize it to like 10% at the moment. So now we already changed the two most important settings, which is the video or the animation as well as the sound. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on text over image on the layout file. But here's the tricky part. If you emulate the subscription alert now, you will see that you can't actually see the text. For the sake of the video, I will now turn down the alert duration to three seconds to make it a bit easier for the preview. Why is the layout text not showing anymore? How to fix this? You go into the text settings and you click on the advanced tab. And here right at the top, you have the margin and it's automatically set to minus 50. So now change it to, for example, 150 and then see what happens if I trigger another subscribe event. The text is here. It's not perfectly placed yet, but now the text is here at least. So now what you can do is you can emulate the alerts and you can just adapt the top margin until the text is perfectly placed. We can emulate it and we're going to set it to 200. And as you can see, it moves while we even emulate it. And as you can see with 250, I'm already pretty close. So I'm going to put it to 225 and we're going to try it again. We're going to do another subscription alert and 225 is almost perfect. And this is the easy layout fix to show your text over the image again. 
So now we close the text settings again and we're back in this menu. I'm going to set up our alert duration again to five seconds. By the way, I muted the brave sound just to make it easy on the video. I'm going to emulate one more time just to make sure how it looks like. And as you can see, I already like the text placement and it's really nice. And now we already have a really nice alert set up, but I also promise you to show you some settings and we'll go through them right now. So one of the text options you have is you can obviously change the text here. You can say just subscribe and you can completely change the text. Obviously, the name changes to the person that actually subscribed to you. So, for example, we can now rename it to thank you so, so much exclamation point. Now, if we emulate again, and we click on subscribe event. You can see here this is the new text, but it's already too big. That is something we have to watch out for. Or if you want it really clean, you can also just delete the text and just have the name shown. You can emulate again, and this is how it would look like just with the subscriber's name. So when it comes to the text, you can pretty much pick and choose what you like. Another option given here by Stream Elements is the show subscriber messages. If someone subscribes to your channel, they can actually put in a message to their subscription. So if you want that shown on your alert, you can also choose to do so. But watch out, the longer the message, the harder it is to place it perfectly over your alert. So in our case, I will just use the name and a thank you. If you scroll down a little further, you can see what I already changed before is the alert duration. You can choose how long an alert is supposed to be shown. There's no right or wrong on this. On average, I think it's 8 to 10 seconds, but choose whatever you prefer. Lastly, you can also adapt the max length for usernames because, as I said before, it can ruin your layout if the names are too long or the text messages. Usually this is a bit hard to do so, so I'll keep it open for now. The next thing I want to show you is the custom font that we added to our Brave series package. If you watched the previous videos, then you already know that you can use a custom font that we deliver in our Brave packages. But actually, Stream Element also allows you to use that same font for your alerts. On the left side, we click on text settings and we scroll down a little bit. And here you can see the option enable custom font. We enable this. Before we do so, I will quickly show you again how to actually install the custom font with our Brave series package. So you open up the Brave series package again, you click on the quick start menu and then you click on step one fonts. And here you can see all the fonts that we use for the package. You double click on the font that you want to use and you click on the installer. It takes a couple of seconds and now your PC actually has the font to use. Now, most importantly, you remember the name of the font, in this case Europhonic. You go back into stream elements, you enable custom font as we did and then you look for the Europhonic font. All you have to do is you enter the font name and as you can see it already adapted at the top here and it accepted the font. So now we enable the custom font, we have Europhonic activated, we change the size to 20 and if we emulate on the subscribe event right now you will see that the text actually changed to the font that we used. So this is a really cool and easy way how to use a custom font in your stream elements alerts. By the way it also works with all the other elements such as labels. There's a lot of options in the text settings as well. Usually I don't change them a lot because it's just very hard to do and risky. So I keep it as it is right now. And for me, it would be done pretty much. The most changes you might have to do is to the font to see if it actually works with the style of your alert. So if you test it here and you think it's a bit too small, then you can change the size, for example, to 30. And as you can see, it already gotten way bigger. Once you have a font that works for you, you can also emulate them and just try again to see about the placement from the top margin. To change the margin again, like I told you before, go into the advanced settings and then change the top margin here until your alert is perfectly placed. Emulate it and you can see right now I really like the placement. It's right in the middle. The text isn't too long. I think this should work pretty well. Please keep in mind, the longer the text or message that you choose or the username, the harder it is to perfectly place it on the alert box. So maybe find like a good middle ground that works for most names and for your text combined. So now we already set up a new animation, a new sound, we adapted the text and we used the custom font. These are pretty much all the essentials. Another cool feature that Stream Elements offers are the TTS settings. TTS stands for text to speech, so that the message will be spoken on your stream through the browser source. If you want to enable that voice, all you have to do is click on enable text to speech, choose the volume and also the voice that you want to use. The last tab that we have is called animation settings. If you open up animation settings, you can already see that here you can change the type of text animation, for example. This might be a really cool thing. Let's have a look at the subscribe alert again. If I trigger the alert, then you can see the text popping up pretty much before or with the alert. To change that, we could go into the text animation settings. To adapt the text better to the animation itself, we can go at the bottom here and look at the text appearance delay. As the name suggests, this just means that your text will be a slightly delayed than the actual animation happening on screen. To give a good example, I will put this to 1.5 seconds and I'm going to emulate another subscribe event. 
As you can see now, the text was slightly delayed with the animation and in my opinion, it looks better. You can also do the same thing with the text disappearing, so that the text disappears earlier than the video animation. Again, we're just going to set it to one second so that you can see. So if we emulate the alert now, what you will see is the animation happens, then after 1.5 seconds the text comes in, and then the text disappears before the animation actually disappears. So this is a really cool feature to just make it look even better. What I'm going to do is I'm setting the text disappearance to 0.5 seconds, and I think this is going to look really, really good. One last try, let's emulate it, and boom, and the text is out and the animation is out. I really like this, and I'm going to keep it like this. Here in the animations tab, you will find also many other cool animation features, and you can just play around and find the perfect one for you. I will show you one quick example. In the text animation settings, you can choose the animation, for example, bounce in, and it can be a one second duration. And if you now emulate it, you will see that the text not just appears, but it will bounce in. As you can see right here. So this is also pretty cool and you can try it out for yourself. And that's it. Now we pretty much set up a full alert together. If you want to use that alert, all you now have to do is click on the save button in the top right corner and then click here and copy the URL for your browser source. Now that we have the browser source copied to our clipboard, we go back into OBS Studio. We go into our sources tab in the scene that we want to add alerts. We click on add browser source and we call it alerts stream elements SE. Click on OK. Then we copy and paste the link. We change the resolution to whatever we used on stream elements. In this case, it was 1920 by 1080. We click on OK, and as you can see, it already perfectly sized to our screen. And now if you want to test if everything is working well, you click on emulate, click on the subscribe event again that we set up. We test it and we go into OBS and boom, there it is. It works perfectly. So now if you want to change the placement of your alert on screen, you go back into the overlay editor and you move the alert box, for example, to the right, you save it and you can test it again. And now, as you can see, we move the alert box and it's happening more to the right. So you can move the alert box wherever you want to. Don't forget to save it in stream elements because only then it also updates for OBS. And theoretically, now you're done and you can set up all your alerts with the same alert box and it will work just fine. A little extra tip. If you want to perfectly send to your widget or your alert box, all you have to do is you open up the layers again, click on the alert box and then position, size and style. You open it up and you can click on send to widget. Now your alerts will happen exactly centered in the middle. But if you want your alerts to happen in the middle but at the top of your screen, all you have to do on the left side here is change top to zero pixels and as you can see it perfectly just moves up. Don't forget to save emulate your alert and see what happens in OBS. Now it is a perfectly centered top alert. And of course, if your alert box is too big or too small, you can resize it by just left click and drag and drop. Again, save, emulate, and if this is what you want, then this will also work perfectly fine. One very important note is if you change your alert box size and you have the layout text over image, then please make sure that your text is perfectly aligned again. I will quickly show you what I mean. If I make this box smaller and I now emulate the subscribe event, you will see that the text is below again and we would have to go back into the text image settings I showed you before and change the margin so that the text is perfectly aligned. But if I resize it to before and I emulate it as I do here, you can see that the text is again at the place that it was supposed to be. So please keep that in mind if you ever resize your alert box. And that's it. We have the alert box set up. It's perfectly centered. It's a really nice alert. It has a sound and it is everything ready to go. All you have to do is repeat this process for all the alerts that you want to use for your stream. Before I end this video, I want to give you an extra tip about variation settings for your alerts. So what are alert variations? We click on the settings of the alert box and you can see all the alerts for our Twitch stream. Alert variations are variations for the same type of alert. So what are variations? For example, we just set up a subscribe alert. This subscribe alert will now be used for any kind of subscription. So no matter if someone has been subscribing for 6 or 12 months, or if someone is gifting a sub, they will all receive the same type of alert. So if you want to spice things up, then you can change different variations for different types of subscriptions. So for example, if someone gifts a subscription to your stream, then there could be a different sound or animation or text displayed. To do so, here at the bottom you see the variation settings. You click on variation and here's three pre-made variations already set up. As you can see, there's the resubscribe, the subscriber gift and the community gift subscriptions. In this case, I want to show you how to add a completely new variation. We click on the new variation 
and we can give it a name or we can copy it. If you click on variation name, you can see here, for example, subscriber, resubscriber. We can copy it and now we already have the base settings. This is really nice because we're already adapting to the settings that we set up before. All of the settings in here work exactly as I showed you before. But there's one big difference. Here at the top, you can set a condition and a requirement amount. So let's say we want to give a special alert to someone that has subscribed for 12 months in a row, which is always a very big achievement for your stream. Here at the top, you can see that the parameter is called month subscribe and the condition has to be exact. In the requirement amount, we can put in 12, which is 12 months exactly. What it actually means is that if someone is subscribing for exactly 12 months, not more, not less, then this alert will be triggered that we now set up. And in here, it works exactly the same way. So we can add or change the sound, the volume, we can add and change the image. And then we just have to confirm it and save it as a variation. And now we have a variation if someone is actually subscribing for 12 months. If you ever want to change the variation, just go in here, click on the cog wheel called settings, and you're back at the settings we just set up. And just giving you an idea what you can choose from here in subscriptions, for example, you can choose month subscribe, you can choose the subscription tier. So if someone is a tier one, tier two or tier three subscriber, you can also give them different types of alerts. In the conditions, you can say exact or at least. What does it mean? So if you say exactly 12 months, then it is exactly for the 12 month anniversary, not for the 13, 14 or 11 month anniversary. But if we change the condition to at least, then it means that everyone that has subscribed for 12 or more months will trigger this special alert. As compared to the setting we had before, which called exact, then only for the 12 month subscription, they will receive the special alert. And that's it. You can set up as many variations as you possibly can for subscriptions. There are some options that do not allow variation settings because follower variation settings do not really exist. But for anything else, such as donation amounts and similar things, there can be a variation set up. And I personally really recommend doing so because if someone has been supporting your stream for 12 months or longer, or if someone donates 1 euro or 100 euros, there is a difference, even though obviously all support is very much appreciated. Giving back by having a greater alert, a different text is a really nice feature for you to do. And now we find it at the end. So this is how you set up your alert box. This is how you add everything in, how you change all the settings and also the variations. If this video was helpful, please leave a comment or leave a like. I would really appreciate it. My name is Omu and I wish you many new followers, active chatters and a lot of success with your streams. I see you in the next videos.